Archaeonauts, away! You can find pyramids in many places around the world. Arguably the most famous are the Egyptian pyramids, the ones at Giza in particular. The Great Pyramid of Giza has long been considered the largest, though the mostly unexcavated Great Pyramid of Cholula in Mexico is thought to be the largest now by volume, though it isn't as tall as the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The Pyramid of the Sun in Teotihuacan is about the same size at its base as the Great Pyramid of Egypt, though it's not as tall either. Pyramids around the world don't all look alike. Some are step pyramids, while others, like the Giza Pyramid, are considered true pyramids, meaning they have flat triangular sides. Some are quite wide, while some are more narrow, like the Nubian pyramids. Step pyramids are a bit more like ziggurats. Some of the American pyramids are more ornate than the true pyramids of Giza, which, although impressive in size, are kind of plain looking by comparison. One thing they have in common, though, is if left alone in the elements long enough to be covered by sand or jungle, they all begin to look like hills in the landscape instead of man-made buildings that they are. Which brings me to Corral, one of the oldest known cities in the Americas. Dated to around 5,000 years ago, making it even older than the Giza Pyramid construction, if you're going by the accepted academic Egyptologist dating for the Giza Pyramids. The dating is based on organic matter found at the site, but it's possible the construction is even older than the organic matter that was found. A German archaeologist came across the corral in 1905, though he didn't realize the hills in front of him were actually pyramids. Historian Paul Kosak is largely credited with recognizing Corral when he visited it in 1948, though. But it was decades later in the 1970s that archaeologists realized the hills of Corral were actually man-made pyramids. It was still another couple of decades before archaeologist Ruth Shady was able to conduct serious excavations at the site. For a while, it was thought it was the oldest city in the Americas, predating other ancient American cultures like the Old Mech by thousands of years. It was later found that there are other cities around Corral that may be even older, although I have to wonder, could it be that Corral and other surrounding ancient cities are actually one big interconnected metro area, with some areas older than the other areas around it? What's more interesting to me is the question of where these ancient city builders came from. Academic historians say the Americas were populated around 13,000 years ago when people crossed an Ice Age land bridge in the Bering Strait. And yeah, while I certainly think it's possible that might have happened, I don't think it's the only way ancient people could have reached the Americas from other continents. I think ancient seafarers could have reached the Americas in ancient times as well. There is evidence of Japanese people visiting the west coast of South America thousands of years ago, with pottery found that is reminiscent of Japanese pottery styles, and there's even DNA evidence. There's also evidence of Polynesians in South America prior to the arrival of the Spanish. Polynesians have a reputation of being great seafarers and navigators going back thousands of years. I mean, I think if they could get to a little old Easter Island out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, I think they could find a big continent. Despite being far away from everywhere, it's a territory of Chile and is closer to South America than it is to mainland Asia or Australia. I'm more impressed that they could find Easter Island in the middle of the ocean. If you can get to Easter Island, I think you can get pretty much anywhere you want to go. But I'm not saying I think Corral was built by Polynesians or Japanese. I've seen other stories of non-native American peoples making it to the Americas prior to the Vikings and Spanish that come in varying degrees of credibility, but I'm not going to elaborate on all of those. People may very well have crossed the Bering Strait land bridge during the last ice age, but I only bring all of this up to point out it's possible people arrived in the Americas in ancient times in other ways too. I think you have to wonder if it was people who crossed over the Bering Strait land bridge, why didn't they start building cities until they got all the way down deep into South America? Why not just do it in California? I mean, I think the weather is nicer. It's not as hot. It's not as humid. It doesn't have the long rainy season Peru has. So, I mean, that really makes me wonder if these are the same people who crossed the Bering Strait land bridge. I mean, I think it's possible they could be, but I think it's also possible they came to South America another way. I don't know who built Corral. Maybe it was people who crossed over the Bering Strait land bridge 
but maybe it wasn't. We just don't know who they were. Whoever they were, they built a city with at least 20 structures, with six of those being pyramids. The largest pyramid, Pyramide Mayor, is nearly 100 feet tall and has a base that covers about four football fields. The pyramids are thought to have been ceremonial or political centers. Corral and the other surrounding sites are thought to be able to support a population of around 20,000 people. Little is known about who the people who lived there were, as no writing has been found at the site, but archaeologists did find some kipu at the site. Kipu is a system of knots used for recording things. Similar to how other cultures use writing to record information, kipu was still used long after the demise of Corral, with the Incas still using kipu thousands of years later. I hope archaeologists will continue to excavate and study Corral and the surrounding area and hopefully can uncover more of its story. It's interesting to me that Corral isn't more famous. I mean, it was an actual lost city. I think when people hear lost city, the first thing to come to mind for a lot of people is Atlantis. Some people don't think Atlantis really existed and it was just an allegory made up by Plato, but I'm not one of those people. I think it probably existed and might even be represented in the Edfu text in Egypt, which is where Plato said the story came from anyway. But the thing is, Atlantis hasn't been found, at least not for sure. Different people think it could be in various places around the world, from the Atlantic Ocean to Crete, North Africa, or even Antarctica. But it's not really known for sure where it was. But Atlantis does have a story. Corral, on the other hand, is a lost city that has been found, but it doesn't have a story. It would be interesting to know what its story is. Hopefully one day we can find out where Atlantis was, and hopefully we can find a story for Corral, too. Those are my thoughts on that. Thanks for listening.